In only a few weeks time, we will reveal a winner for this Pontini giveaway. And if you are not entered, you will miss out. We will reveal the winner at the East Tennessee Fishing Show in January. You have until then to enter. There will be one lucky winner, and hopefully that person is you. So, okay, if I aim at it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, might, might just... I managed to uh, completely destroy his bow. Yeah, maybe... I they... should have had you start with the, with the kids' bows first. Yeah, probably, maybe, yeah, the kids' bow. These are gonna be the light bars. Those are gonna be the light bars. The these are fabricated by a gentleman down there in uh, California before I came up here, and then the lids didn't go there. There was a, there was a confusion in shipment of what, of what was actually showing up. So then I told him just to bring it down here, man. Like you know, I've been wanting to do a, fi a hunting boat forever. What's up, guys? Uh, so I know I said I would never do anybody else's boat again. There was just very unique circumstances where we were kind of working with this gentleman, anyways. Man, it's bright out here. I'm sorry. I know it's impersonal to have glasses on, but he's local to me in Arizona. That's for that's one. That's one thing. He seems pretty solid. I know there was issues with that before when I was working with people and not being able to vet them properly and then them turning out to be whatever they were. Um, I don't think that'll happen this time. And truly, the bigger reason is because this boat covers so many other things that people have been asking me to do, and I just have never been able to do them because of whatever reason a bow fishing slash like roughneck kind of catfishing boat slash like it's going to be one of those boats it's meant to go out and catfish or whatever we're going to make it like a multi-species like boat but it's primarily geared towards hunting so you're going to see those those the light boxes you're going to see different types of tackle you're going to see obscenely deep stow and then different types of stow drainage like well I, we'll have a rod locker and then we're going to have a bow locker so i've never done a bow locker before that'll be pretty dope and we get to kind of learn about the rigs of what and why and how people run the lights for bow fishing because apparently they're obscenely powerful and they take an obscene amount of of wattage or amperage and you need to run a generator just to make them work like you can't you could get like 10 100 amp hour lithium batteries and you'll drain them all in a matter of hours you can have like ten thousand dollars worth of lithium batteries and they'll just drain so you need a generator there's no other way to actually make it work but have you see the boat here um i somebody else did all the hard work out of california they actually went in and gutted it and did everything i really hate to do for the boat and they also welded like a nice a nice little rail like to attach everything like onto the gunnel itself they did all the hard work pretty much framed all the all the major major basic struts and joints and so all i got to do is just go in there and do my thing but we've got to do a few things to it because i'm i mean it's kind of fortunate it came here because i don't think there was a, was a clear understanding of how of how it all was supposed to go in but we we fix that we're gonna fix we're gonna put it in we're gonna put in our system but i do want to thank you I don't have your name, but I'll put it up here in the video before before the video ends. But I really want to thank you. Awesome fabrication. I really like what you did. Nice, clean weld. And you gutted the whole boat. Thank you so much for that. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I hate gutting boats. Hate it. Hey guys, I'm here with my in Phoenix. It's uh raining. Oddly. I don't like it. But uh I had to take a break away. I had to take away a break away from Habitu to kind of come and talk to John and uh, meet up with him. We'll be meeting up with him today and getting a grasp on what it is we need to actually put in the boat. Binoculars because, man, I can't find those seagulls out there. Um, the boils are happening now. When I get back, they'll be there, they'll be active. Hey guys, here we are. He said he needed a truck to haul of his stuff and he was he was uh, not lying. So I have a 350 long bed and we barely, barely got it all in. I, that, that has got to be the longest. That is the truth. The longest, yeah. See, that's the trolling motor, trolling from, motor from there to there. A 72 inch. That's an eight foot box. Yeah. It was like two inches off being eight feet. It barely fit in the back of the truck bed. That's a 30, That's a 36 volt? Jeez, man, you went. That, that'll pull that boat. You know, I, I do it all by hand to make them here, to put, uh, and I make bows and all that stuff. This is some of my, my Euros. And... Except from this year? No. Oh. No, yeah, that's over the years. I got that pile of elk and... Oh yeah, look at all that. Those are legit. Yeah. I just don't have a place to hang them. They're just like, wait, wait until you see what how did you get them so clean? Um, these are, um, some of them were boiled. Some of them are, were put in with beetles. Oh, so you just like let the bugs eat everything off? Yeah, it's uh, they're, they're a type of beetle that 
basically eats flesh and you put it you put them in the beetles the beetles eat them i mean pick it clean and then you just have to you know uh there's some there's a process to it but what is this called that this is longhorn sheep no or this is i i do have a bighorn sheep big corn sheep okay yeah these are arizona mule deer this is just um this is called a mule deer called a, yeah these are mule deer oh okay these, this is a texas doll this is a black buck this thing seems like it's got some pretty good use here do you, are you like shooting this like in the garage uh like no, no I'm putting not. a hole through the wall no? no no i just threw this up here right now but uh all right actually i have i have done that when i do some tuning stuff because you're only supposed to shoot from like six feet when you do it's pretty I, confident huh like me if oh, I, yeah. i'd have like a metal wall there just in case yeah yeah things went bad but <laughs> oh those are rad yeah this is a this is a bow that was uh was a, was one of my first really successful bows um it's hickory bamboo and then i backed it with like a carbon fiber which is kind of cool how long it, how long it take to make that a couple weeks here's a couple of the kids this is the kids bow fishing bows right here that's pretty rad. So it just reels the line right into that little tube, and it yeah. never gets tangled in there. It, it it does every once in a while, but it's not a. That's impressive. Yeah, I, w I was wondering about that. I yeah, I got to really well, look at one I'll show close. you mine. Mine's completely different. I don't use the bottle style. Uh huh. Mine looks like a fishing reel. Huh. Yeah. Isn't that what that is? But just it just it yeah. Just, I mean, it just fishes it all in there. Mine looks like um like a spin like a spin cast. This is where it all gets done. This is where this is where the magic happens. Is just do all my there's even more horns. Like yeah, there's a mountain lion. This is that ibex, okay. and it is the toughest hunt in North America. To get well, yeah, you got to climb a mountain. It's and they can jump it, all right. It used to be two percent uh, success rate. It's got out to about five because it got really popular and a lot of people like spent time and oh. but so it's about five percent now. And I was the first guy to do it with a bow on film. And I actually have that videos on, on YouTube. So two percent success rate, ninety eight percent failure rate. Yeah. That's probably why I only have one. It's got like a seventy five percent abandonment rate. So where people will go, they'll hunt for like three days and like, oh shit, I'm not gonna do this. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's crazy. You're doing it all the hard way, man. Well, you know, I just, I know, I, I we've been, my son's been watching yeah. your casting videos. Oh, yeah. Your swim baits and stuff like that. This is the one, huh? Yeah, this is my personal boat. Oh, so you got like a spin cast. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that looks like a legit, oh, so it reels the actual line in right. completely, so there's no fail. Yeah. Nice. That's you, you pull on here to give it tension when you're reeling. When you're not reeling, you just, you know, when you're shooting, you just, you just leave it, leave it. Light. That's right. This is literally the best. This reel's like Bucks. I, it they're looks ridiculous. like they're ridiculous. Yeah, and you ever look at the ice fishing reels, you don't think of much of them, but they're probably like obscene. Yeah. And that um, thing is just a five hundred dollar spin cast reel, guys. Yeah, it's it's nuts. You know what spin cast reels in the fishing market go for? Yeah, five dollars. Exactly. <laughs> it jacks up the gears. Oh, You're yeah. constantly messing with it. Like this is. Oh, so this one is just free. It. So free, you free, you have to pull free. the lever in order to activate it. Otherwise, it's always, it's always a free spin. To, to reel it in. Okay. Otherwise, it's just gonna. So you can never forget. Yeah, it's always going to pull out. And then the torque, you know, ratio is completely different. This, like, you do one reel, it, it, it takes up, I think, like, 12 inches, huh. you know, one every pass. So it's oh, much, see. much faster. Than Let's check this out. John here made a bow fishing target. Let's see it. Yeah, this is this is uh, my this is my old prototype one. Uh, so we'll use this. I'm not I'm not going to show the new prototype, but. Um, until it goes to market, but it's adjustable. You can adjust how deep you want it in the water. Um, and it, it just, it's great for target practice and bow fishing. And then you have this. Yeah, look, that, that, like that's a triple. legit fish there, huh? Yeah. I even have special uh, target tips that we made for you for it so that you just hit it and it won't. Cause right now if we shoot it with that, yeah. it's gonna, I mean, hey, if you get it on your first try, I'd be very, very surprised. All right. so. It's pretty simple, you know, you just load it, make sure that your, your string is out here in front freely. This is a, a glide, safety glide, so that it it doesn't catch on anything, basically. And okay. uh, you just don't want the string behind your rest because then it'll get tangled up when you go to shoot and it'll bounce back at you. One, yeah. This bow is set up for one finger up top and two below. And you just draw back cleanly to here, touch the string to your nose. But because we're shooting out a fish that's in the water, we have to adjust, like I said earlier, you have to aim low. Shoot it, so you just pull it back here. Yeah. And so 
might might just i managed to uh completely destroy his bow <laughs> i don't think he's gonna invite me back here no we're gonna we're yeah. gonna teach you how to do it the right way yeah maybe i they... should have had you start with the with the kids bows first yeah probably maybe yeah the kids bow it's all right how, how much is that gear don't worry about it man Jeez. All right, guys, so it starts. The biggest boat that I've ever had, the one that will require the most skill and the most new changes. I will have to grow to build this boat and make it what it needs to be. Stay tuned and watch all the crazy things we try, the things that don't work, the things that we'll have to reshape and redo, the many trips to the weld shop, and the new framing style that we're gonna put out. Thank you, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Tight lines. Peace.